Jeff is working hard in the engine bay. And while he's doing that, I am re-seasoning our cast iron skillet in the oven over there. He's cleaning all of the rust off of the engine. And then we're going to be doing a primer or something and then painting it. Been getting a lot of water damages from the humidity that's in the engine bay when we were gone from the boat. So we want to get that taken care of and then we can actually see the condition of the engine and monitor it a bit better for the future. And now we are just going to be going out running some errands. So let's go do that. Getting in the buck mobile. The vehicle is almost out of gas, so the uh, marina office gave us some cash to fill up the buck mobile with some fuel. I'm just saying that there's TVs on the top here, so you can watch like commercials and TV while you pump your gas. Yay. That's pretty fun. <laughs> Making a stop here at Town Creek Marina. We're gonna get that Yanmar engine paint. Got it. Here is the ICW. <laughs> Just made another stop here at uh, Island Marina, Rusty Ron's Marine Surplus. We've heard a lot of good things about this place for used marine parts. You never know what you can find. Let's go check it out. got everything that you wanted and that you didn't want. <laughs> Look at this little on piece of teak. Nice. Clean it up. Okay. Got some holding tanks. Some biminis. Toilets. <laughs> got some swim ladders. Some battery cables. Patch covers. Look at all this stuff. Thank you, puppies. They're so cute. Okay, see you later. No luck there, but it was certainly interesting walking around. Next stop is some liquor store goods. Got the Burnett brand of gin and vodka. Jeff here is finding some Canadian rum products. Look at this Canadian hunter rum. <laughs> Buy it for the label. Drink it for the taste. <laughs> Back to the boat now. Got our goodies. One thing that works really well for us on the boat for our alcohol storage is getting these little plastic rum runners, they're called. And then we just transfer the big bottles into the, the small ones. And then if there is glass, it's not gonna break on the boat and takes up a lot less space because they, they will fit into a lot of different places rather than these big bottles. I've done the vodka ones and next we'll do the rum. Always gotta have rum on the boat. We just got them off of Amazon. They're not too expensive and they come with this little funnel as well. And then they all get stored in our table. New disgusting development aboard Joko. We have a stowaway. This is disgusting. Oh, he's starting to move now. We found a cockroach walking around and this is so gross. We found a couple that were on the deck that had died on the deck and we threw them away. But this guy actually made it inside. Ew. Gotta get rid of him. Stat. Got him. Him out. Growth. And now this is what the boat looks like. After the cockroach attack, we decided to tear the boat apart to find them. No, just kidding. Jeff um, finished cleaning. It's very dark, but he was cleaning the engine, the rust off of it. Now we have the doors off. We have a heater on it to help it to dry faster. And it's hot today, so we have all the fans going. And then while that's drying, why not do another project, huh? And deciding to fix the water maker. Well, not fix it, but continue the installation. There was one part 
that leaked before we left Maryland the last time. And uh, yeah, now Jeff is gonna be trying to figure that out now too. Top down view of Jeffy working. Quite the small quarters. Jeffy finally finished in here. It was a big job to do. So I'll just give you a view of our water maker set up here. This is in the V-Birth. Some people we know that have our same boat, they have their water makers in their bathroom underneath the, um, the sink. And we know of one person that had it up here. So we thought this was a great place for it as well. So the part that Jeff had to redo was just right in there, was leaking, and of course that's the most difficult area to get to, but um, he managed to get it. We will give you an update if it works, if the seal works properly once we are in the water and can turn it on, because that is for the raw water, the seawater intake there. But yeah, that's what it looks like. Next step in the water maker assembly, we'll be installing some high pressure gauges. These ones. I need to assemble all this stuff the way I want it. So that they're actually usable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like this. I'm just gonna barely get away with this, I think. This looks like the last piece, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. As if I can get the orientation I want out of it. Oh, I think I might. <gasps> Maybe. We'll see. Crank that down, babe. Yeah, we shall see. It's got to do it, you know? Yeah. And now I just have to install it back in the V-Birth and that's it? Yeah, basically bolt it back to the wall and then hopefully nothing ever blows up. Nice. <laughs> hopefully nothing blows up. That sounds promising. So it'll sit like this. Oh, no, I don't like that at all. Well, actually, if I do that... How the hell am I supposed to make sure that it gets into that plate? Like, seriously, guys, <laughs> seriously. Maybe you should be a water maker designer in your next life. Make it easier for people. I know. <laughs> How's it going there so far, Captain? It's getting tighter and tighter by the second here. <laughs> Loctite 565, your favorite. Shit's good. It's really messy, though. Yeah, a lot really, of paper towels here. Definitely. Definitely messy, but it anaerobically cures. I like that idea. That means cures without oxygen. We are doing a little dry fit install here. I'd say that's freaking good. <laughs> Seriously. It's really difficult because this whole long hose needs to fully do turns in order to be cranked on that fitting over there. Yeah, now we need to take a twist out of it, go like this. Or something, because it's going to go up and into the membrane, which will be sitting here. This can go on after, get out of the way. Um, Jeffy is the jack of all trades. So you just finished up putting that water maker piece 
back together again, which was a biatch. Now he's back in the engine bay. It's dry in there. He has some tin foil. He's going to be covering up the areas that he doesn't want to get paint on when he's going to be doing this paint for the engine. <laughs> Are you baking me a cake with that? Yeah. <laughs> Apparently this is how the hot rodders did it back in the day or something, or maybe they still do. I don't know. Does anyone even hot yeah. rod anymore? I don't Let us know, know in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's your favorite hot rod? <laughs> They're told to put tin foil on all the areas and that uh, it'll work real good. Lots of people put um, like tape, but tape can be kind of annoying to get off afterwards, we're told. And we know that's true as well. So let's just try out this method, see if it works for us. And if we don't like it, we'll go back to the old faithful tape. Names of the past. <laughs> Look at this. So know, pretty. I don't know that it's going to work, but we're going to try it. Yeah. Ripping shit right now. Yeah. It's going to be in my way, I don't know. <laughs> it's amazing the things that you have to do, hey? <laughs> Your face. <laughs> oh, I love you. Memo right. to self. Buy more tin foil next time we're at the grocery store. Because that seems in a lot. The captain is getting a lot done, so therefore, the ice maker gets turned on for the very first time since we've been here. Oh, little baby ice. Yes. <laughs> I think it's a given that we're going to be putting the ice cubes in some mixed drinks, right? Right. Yeah, that's us. So this is the stuff that we're going to be putting on there first by Permatex Rust Treatment. It destroys rust on contact. So it's pretty powerful stuff and we just spray um, a thin layer on there and allow no more than two minutes between coats for drying time and then we apply two to three coats and then basically it turns the rust black and kind of like stops it from happening and then after that we can paint it. Interesting. Shake well before use. Almost go time. Ow! Smacked my head. And this is what it looks like now. Looks like Christmas. Unfortunately, I can't film what's going on in there because I don't have any protective equipment. Jeff has to wear a respirator, goggles, gloves, all of that. So we'll just show you the finished product after it's done. Jeffy just finished down there, having a breather <clears throat> and a drink of water. How was that? <laughs> Just, everything is just awkward on a boat. Yep. But you just gotta ignore it and just do it. Just gotta get in there and do it anyway. Eventually, if you get there, you break something, pay someone else to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And so we're just letting everything vent out in there for right now, and then I'll go and show you what it looks like. All right, it is now the next morning, and coming to take a look at what that rust treatment stuff has done. Um, well, it's supposed to be going black right on contact. And as you can see, it's not really black. It's still kind of a rusty color. Jeff said that there was one part where he sprayed it on and it turned black instantly. The can said to do two to three coats. Uh, and, and I think Jeff ended up doing more like four to five. Six. Six. Okay. I stand corrected. Six coats. So we're just going to paint it. And so it didn't really go black exactly how it's supposed to. We looked up some reviews and some other people said they had that problem too. But it is treating it, protecting it, at, like to some level anyway. So we're just going to keep on going ahead and do the next step by painting this area tonight. After 24 hours, you have to wait. So we'll do that this evening after dinner. So in here is where Jeff did his two coats of paint down in here to the Yanmar silver. So now everything looks the same. I think it looks good. It's hard to tell with the flashlight directly on it, but yeah, this whole corner was rust. But I think it looks good. Good job, babe. What are you showing areas that I didn't do yet? Uh, well, there's just like a rusty clamp right there. Right there. Oh yeah, that's, that's that was all protected by Tim That doesn't matter. That's just a bracket. Yeah. But yeah, it looks good. Success.
Ooh, a new Volvo shifter, part two. And look at that. There's what we were going after. Nice and it's tight. It's not broken anywhere that you can see. I'm not seeing broken stuff. Thank the Lord. OMG. So we got this one off of eBay. It was more expensive than through Volvo directly. With a box there. Yeah, so Same that's thing. a common thing, yeah, I guess. Work on that, guys. Yeah. And then I got one of these little gorilla pod things. So now for videos. I can put this thing up and put the phone on it and we'll actually both be in the video at the same time. So now we're gonna have new shifter cables. We have new uh, throttle cables. We have the new autopilot cables, well shifter and then autopilot cables, steering cables. Not, yeah, not autopilot, that's a piston, steering cables. Steering cables. <laughs> and new steering chain, yeah, so that's the chain. And the chain, yeah. And we did full maintenance tear down of the bearings inside the, so even though our pedestal looks like it's worn out, all of the actuating stuff is in great condition or new. And our engine isn't worked on and the new shaft motorboats. seal better not leak after all this. And so it shouldn't vibrate and our exhaust, our exhaust is new. Exhaust is all new, Should muffler. Our fuel tank is new. We have dual fuel filters. <laughs> I think all that is left to do is we have to go sailing. We're just going to drive this thing like a car. No, no, please. We, we also have new sails, which we got to use those too, you know? So we're getting there. We're getting there. Very slowly, close. Slowly, slowly getting there. And now I got to order Amazon. More stuff. Oh, still, shocker. Still more stuff coming too. Shocker. We're still our new gypsy and our new, you know, the various parts so we can keep yep. our current chain since we figured out what it is. And then we'll just have to store our HT Gypsy for the future when we get more chain, bigger chain, and we'll move the propane tank. But that is all like sometime in the future. Yeah, later After on. we get more sponsors. So like, subscribe. Ooh! Yep, don't forget, like, subscribe if you aren't already to get more of this. Yeah, if you want to see that. <laughs> Don't act like you're not impressed. <laughs> All the cheese is right here with Joko. So yeah, thanks for watching.